Well, hello, everybody. I hope you are doing good. And um, I'll tell you what, we're about to finish up the year. And I want to encourage you to finish strong. Okay. Um, just do everything you're supposed to do and finish finish the year strong as you finish up the year. Had to fix my little thing there. It's poking up. Got to make sure Got to make sure you're good on the video, you know? So anyway, um, man, you guys are awesome. I'm speaking to the greatest seventh grade classes in the world, except for that one guy. You know, you know who I'm talking about now? You know, one person? No, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, who'd y'all think about right there, huh? Who you, who's going through your mind? Uh, no, I'm just playing around with you. I miss seeing you guys. We're going to have a great class today, and I want you to just finish strong and finish Acts chapter 7 strong. There may even be a person that's going to memorize all of it. I think there's a couple people that were getting close, but no matter where you are, do Acts chapter 7 uh, the best that you can, okay? And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about Paul's letters. And I'm going to go as fast as I can, if I can, all right? So I'm going to do the best I can. So let's do this real quick. We're going to share this screen. And we're going to go over there. And we're going to come down here. And we're going to get this right here. And we're going to review Paul's letters and then talk quickly about 1 Corinthians. Okay, so. Paul's letters, if you remember, we had the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, church, the church, the ecclesia, this called out assembly, these uh, believers that received the Holy Spirit and uh, came to know the Lord. Um, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said that these believers uh, would give out the gospel, they would receive power, and the gospel would spread, and it did, and it spread and churches were established, and there were problems and issues and difficulties, and Paul writes these letters to these churches. And so let's go through these quickly, okay? The books, 13 books and their keywords. So here we go. Romans, paid in full. 1 Corinthians, and we're going to talk about 1 Corinthians in a minute, spanking the saints. 2 Corinthians, anatomy of an apostle. Galatians, unshackled. Ephesians, bodybuilding. Philippians, happily humble. Colossians, commander-in-chief. First Thessalonians, stay on target. Second Thessalonians, work while you wait. First Timothy, leadership manual. Second Timothy, combat manual. Titus, conduct manual. Philemon, bondage to brotherhood. Okay, so there are Paul's letters. Then within Paul's letters, you have two um, other groups that we have different names for. You have the prison epistles because they were written from prison in Rome. And so you have Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And then you have the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy and Titus. Okay, do you know those? Paul's letters. And then within those letters, th these two groups are in there. Okay, so you have the uh, prison epistles. Okay, Paul concerned for these people, for people so much. Um, he constantly prayed for them, um, always concerned for their souls. And um, so his letters here says, reflect his pastor's heart and his love and concern for those he thought, he thought of as his spiritual children, okay? And so the prison epistles, instead of Paul being like, uh, I mean, it's pretty tough being in prison, but Paul saw that as an opportunity to, uh, to do what God had called him to do. So you have these books, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, okay? And then the pastoral epistles, okay? When you think of the pastoral epistles, um, Paul was an old, old, an old man at this time. Um, and before he passed away, his heart was still like thinking his... He's, he's concerned for his spiritual children, his successors coming after him. And so here it says he was concerned for his successors in the pastorate. And so he wrote to them on how to lead the church. And so some of the things he talked about, uh, the appointing of elders and deacons, 
he talked about the opposition of rebellious members or false teachers and the maintenance of doctrinal purity. So you have 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. Okay, so that is just a quick review of Paul's letters. And so what we're going to do here real quick, we are going to talk about the church at Corinth. Okay, just for a minute or two. Okay, so I want you to work some on Acts today. And so um, when you look at, we've already looked at this little map here. So this is a map that shows the area where many of these churches that Paul um, wrote these letters to. And you can see that area there. But what we're going to talk about real quick here is this church right here, Corinth. Okay. And so we're going to come down to this map here. I can get right on it. And so this is a, a, a closer shot of this place called Corinth. And so when you think of Corinth, you think of the key word what? Say it again. Right. Spanking the saints. So you get a spanking. Why? Sometimes you might get a spanking or you might get in trouble because you're doing the wrong things. And so this church at Corinth was doing the wrong things many times. And so a couple things to think about when you think about this church at Corinth, you think about the location. And let me just read you something here real quick about the location. And uh, like I said, we could take a lot of time on this um, book, but we won't today. So here's a little, little note about the location. Um, the Ithmenian Games were one of the two most famous, famous athletic events of that day. And the other was the what? The Olympic Games. And so that brought a lot of people there. Probably a lot, well, a lot of partying, a lot of bad things. That's that uh, this, this place, Corinth, drew a lot of people. And this was one reason here. Um, the Ithmenian Games and the Olympic Games was hosted by Corinth, causing more people traffic. Um, even by the pagan standards of its own culture, um, Corinth became so morally corrupt that its very nature became synonymous with debauchery or moral depravity. And then another factor that brought um, a lot of people and trade and um, really being a popular place was its, was its location because if you look here, um, what would happen is this, uh, instead of what people would do, instead of traveling, like for example, if, if somebody wanted to go over to this part here, okay, what would happen instead of traveling all the way down around here this i believe 250 miles is what i think i read and going that distance and then it being really really dangerous um there was what they would do is they would take their cargo and even their ships many times across this four mile area right through here which was a lot easier than going all the way around so that brought a lot of people there a lot of trade and so this place was a popular place but it became a place that was known for its sin and um, what happened here Paul had founded this church and a few years after leaving Paul heard some disturbing things these this church was not uh, doing the things that it should be doing. It wasn't being what it should be. And some of the uh, some of the problems that it had, I'll read a couple of them to you here. A lot of pride, excusing sin in the church, um, taking each other to court, um, using their spiritual gifts in the wrong way, factions, um, choosing sides instead of uh, the truth of God's word. Um, and so basically they were, it was an immature church and Paul was telling them before you were saved, 
hey, before you were born again, that's what you were. Don't go back to that. Okay, I want, you're supposed to be different. Don't let the culture change you. You become strong in the Lord and you can help change the culture. Um, just a couple key verses for 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 3. Paul says this, you are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like men? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, 20 says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. Another verse. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So you get the point. This place was um, filled with, this church was filled with Christians that were immature and that needed to grow and needed to learn to have victory over these sins. And so when you think about 1 Corinthians, think about spanking the saints. This was a troubled church that was having a lot of difficulty with the location and the sin that was there, and it was getting into the church, and uh, Paul wanted this to stop, and he wanted them to grow in the Lord. So that's the book of 1 Corinthians. So I hope that helps you, and a good book to read, and so we're going to stop sharing here, and uh, I tell you what, we're learning the Bible. I want to encourage you to read your Bible. Uh, maybe read one of the, uh, read one of Paul's letters. Maybe slow down and read some from 1 Corinthians and just kind of get an idea of the book. Love you guys, and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. And remember, Shechem.